A few weeks ago, Amiran Jaranashvili followed his cows across this ravine near his village and discovered he'd stumbled into Russian-controlled territory. The animals don't know where the boundaries are, do they? This is the place where you were detained? Jaranashvili was detained in a region that's known as South Ossetia, a breakaway state that Russia considers an independent republic, and Georgia calls occupied territory. In 2008, the two nations fought a brutal five-day war over this area that ended with a stalemate. But in the last several years, Russia's begun building the trappings of a formal state, installing barbed wire fences and military outposts along what it considers the border. And Georgian officials have been bringing reporters here to show that the situation has only gotten worse. Does it make you angry that people are getting detained while they're trying to do their jobs? <laughs> For Georgian officials, Russia's actions are making the case for something they've been after for more than a decade, membership in NATO. Joining NATO and Euro-Atlantic integration is uh, one of top foreign policy priority for Georgia. David Zakaliani is Georgia's newly appointed foreign minister. Do you think it's really realistic, though? I mean, it has been 10 years. Yes, it has been 10 years, but um, uh, we are implementing su successfully all reforms in the military and defense uh, sector. We are the biggest per capita contributor uh, to the resolute support mission in Afghanistan, and we are fighting together with United States together with other NATO allies. I mean, Georgia deserves to be finally accepted to the NATO full-fledged member, and it's the only political barrier uh, towards uh, the final membership. It's been a frustrating campaign for Georgia. In 2008, NATO promised Georgia it would be offered a formal path to membership. But the invitation has never come, held up by members who don't want to invite an open conflict with Russia. And that's raised a question that Georgian politicians are reluctant to engage with, at least in public. To some extent, are you carrying on as if NATO might not happen? I think that we have to do our job, what we are doing right now, and to wait for the momentum. And I believe that this momentum will come. That's the right thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but, you know, it has been. I mean, it must be a frustrating time. I believe that uh, despite all these difficulties, we have to demonstrate uh, strategic patience and we have to continue all these reforms. Gia Nodia is a former minister of education and one of the few people in Tbilisi to openly acknowledge how little has changed in 10 years. Georgia has been talking about NATO membership for a long time now. Right. Is it happening? Okay, it's not happening, but we have what we have. We have a promise that we will be, uh, become members of NATO eventually, and this promise is reiterated uh, in, on every NATO summit. I mean, the Georgian policy community understands that membership of NATO is somehow, somewhere far in the horizon. But they don't say it. They don't say it in public, of course. Why not? Yeah, because it's unpopular, because it plays into the hands of Russian propaganda, because Russians say that, oh, the West does not care about you. Pro-Russian parties have been making inroads in recent elections, and although three-quarters of the country still supports joining NATO, Nodia says relying on empty promises has left Georgia exposed. War with Russia showed that the West supports us to some extent, but not really strongly. So we cannot fully rely on that. There is no plan B in the sense of joining some other security organization, but the plan B is really having very good relations with all our neighbors. If Georgia joined NATO, do you think that would help this situation? Nothing seems to scare the Russians right now. Would you fight again? 
راحت مار می دوله فراری. ولی؟ نه تا یه راهی کنه بوده این سمت هایش مکلان دیماتم.